All right, and we back. The NFL season is winding down, surprisingly. We're already through week 12. And I want to talk about every team a little bit. I'm going to do a little bit of a ranking here. We're going to start with the worst team in the league, the Jacksonville Jaguars. This Jacksonville Jaguars team just got obliterated, obliterated, like truly fucking throttled. 52 to 6. I mean, they've lost 14 of the last 17 under Peterson. Like uh, the team, they were a dumpster fire even before Trevor Lawrence's AC joint <clears throat> got hurt and they had to just pivot to Mac Jones. They need to find a new coach that can get the most out of Trevor Lawrence and they need to get these the team someone that can give them more effort and, and Doug Peterson is just not it. They just need to blow it up in Jacksonville. Next up, Cleveland. I mean, this team is fucking bad. They're terrible. Kicker can't hit from 27 yards. They can move the ball, but they can't score points and they have a lot of bad contracts on their book. I mean, listen, at the end of the day, it's terrible. I can't tell if everybody on that team is trying to get the number one pick or if they just are all bad. The only question to me is, like, who's going to get the number one pick? They're in the running for sure. I believe they're 2-8 and eight at this time. I, I just, it would be, I would be remiss if I were the number one pick and I want to go play for fucking Cleveland. I would be shocked. I wouldn't be shocked, excuse me, if the number one pick pulls an Eli Manning. Speaking of Eli Manning, the Giants, 2-8, and eight, they're terrible. They had, they had a bye week this past week, but... They underwent a big change. They're switching from Daniel Jones, who fell all the way to the third on the depth chart, to Tommy DeVito under center. Now, Tommy DeVito isn't going to be the guy going forward, but you hope he just sparks this team. And obviously, you assume the ownership from the Giants. They've already come out and said that they're going to keep Brian Dabble and uh, GM Joe Schoen, because at the end of the day, it's not their fault. Well, I mean, it's not Dabble's fault. Let's start there. But, you know, you're in the thick of the hunt for the number one pick. You assume Daniel Jones is gone. This team is just fucking bad. Next up, another 2-8 and eight team, the Tennessee Titans. I mean, Will Levis has had a shaky season, uh, to say the least. You know, he's made his fair share of mistakes, but he is not the only problem on this team. But a lot of times he's running for his life. He plays with a lot of heart and guts. He does, you know, he's not Baker Mayfield, like, but that's an easy comp just because he does, doesn't fucking quit. I think if the team around Levis was better, he would look obviously significantly better. But at the end of the day, this season is all about evaluating him. Tony Pollard has cooled off significantly since the start of the season. Brian Callahan, who knows if he's a good coach. They don't have any receivers in Tennessee. I still expect Tennessee to go get a new quarterback in this offseason. But I, listen, if I'm a quarterback, I don't want to go to fucking Tennessee. And if I get drafted there, good luck. Next up, the Patriots. They're 3-8. and eight. Listen, this is the first team we're at where there's some signs of positivity. Drake May, 282 yards and two touchdowns. A uh, passer rating over 100 for the first time. He's clicking with some of the veterans. Hunter Henry's having great games under Drake May. And they're not, you know, they lost to the Rams 28-22. to And winning and losing is all that matters. But hey, you're the Patriots. You're not necessarily trying to win right now. So losing games and still seeing improvements from your team is huge. The defense really isn't that good, but they're a scrappy defense. They're fun to watch. Gerard Mayo, the new head coach, is learning. He, you know, he's a first-year head coach, but he's doing it on the fly. He's doing a great job. And, and they have a bright future, and I think they're going to have a chance to play spoiler over the next couple months. The Raiders lost again this week. I have them next. I mean, listen, they just couldn't score in the red zone. They're not, there's not any uh, quit in this team. Gardner Minshew and these boys are continuing to fight down at the bitter end. But at the end of the day, they're just, they're just not talented enough. Brock Bowers is good. We saw Michael Mayer return, which was awesome. And they don't. They probably won't win more than four games or two and eight at this at this recording. But um, Brock Bowers is huge. He is the tight end of the future. I don't know how they're going to run if they're just going to run with twelve personnel, um, which is one back, two tight ends. Because Michael Mayer is there. They drafted him to be the guy. But it, listen, it's going to be incredible to see how they handle this. But they do have some building blocks going forward. They need to get a QB in this fucking draft. They cannot do this shit again. Carolina had the bye. They came back from Germany. They won that game in Germany. They are three and nine. Listen, you're not going to get too many flowers for beating the Giants, but hey, the Panthers are building something. They're, they're they seem like they're bought in. All the reports from inside Panthers camp seem like this team is is cohesive and together. Bryce Young is going to start this week against the Chiefs. They're not going to win this game, but hey, you know, another opportunity for him to prove himself. And I still think the Panthers, unless Bryce Young continues to show down the stretch of this season that he is the guy, they might need to look at quarterback because listen, sun cost fallacy. You can't just let the fact that you drafted this guy high affect you from not continuing to grow as a franchise. Next up, Dallas. I mean, this is a lost season due to injury. Mike McCarthy, he's got to go. I don't know who, he, listen, he's not fired yet, but he should be. And I'm not sure who they're going to get to replace him, but it'll be interesting to see. And uh, I wonder who they're going to, like, you know, Kellen Moore, maybe a Deion Sanders. Listen, I'm just regurgitating things that have been heard. Maybe a Jason Witten, uh, which interesting enough because he's a high school coach and that would be crazy if he came in from high school to replace an NFL team. But, I mean, play this season out, get a high pick, hire a young offensive coordinator, you know, maybe it's Kellen Moore. I, I don't know. Hire someone, but damn, this team is stale and they are bad. The Jets, I mean, listen, they're 3-7. and seven. They just lost to Indy. It sucks because, you know, they traded for Aaron Rodgers and – still bad. And then they trade for Devonta Adams and they're going to make this crazy run. And they're on a bye this week. So they have a chance to rest up and, and maybe, maybe make a run down the stretch. But I, I can't imagine. I, I don't even know what to do. I, if you're the Jets, you take a, a starting quarterback high in this first round if you can get one. And 
have him learn under Rodgers and, and just cut bait with Rodgers at the end of next season. Like, you're already looking for a new coach anyway, so you might as well just go get a new coach and a new quarterback. That's how you should do things. I, I just – the Jets are old and they are bad. Next up, the Saints. They're 4-7. and seven. The Saints have been such a weird team. They started the season off 2-0, and and then since then they lost seven straight, and then since then they've won two more in a row. And it's not like they beat terribly good teams. They beat the shit out of the Browns. Taysom Hill had an incredible game. I think he scored like 45 points in fantasy. And again, it's probably too late for the Saints to make the playoffs in the NFC South, but this team has some fight. The defense is interesting. Or excuse me, they're, the defense is a liability, but they're an interesting team. Marquez Vilda Scantling somehow is, is is functional with Derek Carr, but couldn't figure it out with, with fucking Aaron Rodgers and Patrick Mahomes. But the team isn't going to go anywhere, but it's good to see that there are still some pieces on this Saints team. Next up, the Bears. I mean, this one, I don't, it, there's really not much to talk about. The Bears' offense looked better, still kind of in a slog. They played a good Packers team and then lost in another Bears way. It's just Caleb Williams had 70 rushing yards. They had almost 200 on the ground as a team. If anything, you might want to shift to a more offensive, uh, run heavy attack, but it's just, it sucks to be the Bears. They're four and six. And I think if they were to flip every one of their one score games, they'd be like seven and three, I think, which is criminal. Next up, the call, it's five and six. Anthony Richardson, he played fantastic. This is the guy that they thought they were going to get, and this is the guy that they drafted. I'm looking at it here, 20 for 30, 272 yards, one touchdown, a passer rating north of 100, ran for two touchdowns as well, back off his benching. Hopefully, you know, he learned the lesson that he needed to learn. I'm hoping that, you know, he learned his lesson, that he, he got the message because he looks good. The Colts, they're five and six, not out of it yet. Dolphins are four and six. They started the season two and six. Tua comes back. They win the next two. Um, Jonu Smith is looking more and more like a piece in this Miami offense. Obviously, Tyree Kill, Jalen Waddle. You have Devon A. Chain, Raheem Mostert still there. Tyree Kill does have a torn ligament in his wrist, so that'll be interesting to see how he plays. But listen, this Miami offense could score with anybody. So if you told me this team makes the playoffs, anything can happen. Next up, Cincinnati. I mean, this team, you just it, you feel for Cincinnati fans, man. And especially Joe Burrow and Jamar Chase. They are putting on an offensive clinic, and they're just wasting this year. They were down 27-6, to six, made an incredible comeback, but Chargers held on to win the game. They give good teams all they can handle, but they just lose. But the defense has to be fixed, right? Joe Burrow, Jamar Chase, T. Higgins, they're incredible. But the playoffs seem like, unless the defense figures it out in the next two weeks, it's over. Tampa Bay, four and six. They had a bye week this week. Um, yeah, this team is dealing with a lot of injuries in the receiving room. They've lost four straight, five out of six. Obviously, Mike Evans wants to be out there, but Chris Godwin's still out. I mean, every one of their losses has been within a touchdown. I mean, you just have to win. The, you have to beat the Giants. If you can't beat the Giants, you got to shut everybody down. Tank. I mean, you just, you can't. And the NFC South, nobody wants to win. Atlanta's really the only one that's kind of created any sort of separation. But if you don't win against the Giants, you might as well just tank this year. Speaking of Atlanta, Atlanta, 6-5. and five. They got punched in the throat by Denver. Denver, Bo Nix. They only got two and a half yards per carry on the ground. Couldn't throw the ball either. They were embarrassed. I mean, Denver beat the shit out of them. They have a really talented roster, especially on offense, but defensively, they cannot rush the quarterback, and that's huge. That's a big hole on this team. They have 10 sacks in 11 games. Some players have nearly as many of that or more than an entire team. That's unbelievable, and NFL quarterbacks, when they can get comfortable in the pocket, they're going to pick defenses apart. That They need to fix that. I don't know how they need to do it, but they need to do something about it. At the halfway mark, Seattle 16th, they're fifth, they're, excuse me, five and five. They started the season three and oh, they came out of um, that stretch, dropped five of the next six to go to four and five, and then they won the next game. They needed to beat San Francisco, and they did. They snuck out of that game. It was a gut check win. Listen, Seattle's not the best team, but they're gritty, they're fun. 25 32, 221, and a touchdown for Geno Smith. Not the best game, not a touchdown, but an interception. But listen, Geno Smith won't go away. The Seahawks are going to be competitive. You hope that the Seahawks can, you know, lean on Geno and, and he can find Tyler Lockett and Jackson Smith and Jigba and they can really get it going because this Seahawks team, they have a lot of good pieces on this team. The Rams, another team in the NFC West, they're hanging around 5-5. Five and five. They beat the New England Patriots. Cooper Cup is back. Puka Nakua is back. I mean, Stafford, 295 for touchdowns. Cooper Cup, 6 for 106 and two touchdowns. Puka, 7 for 123 and a touchdown. Obviously, having all these guys back makes it so much easier for Stafford. They're only one game behind the Arizona Cardinals and the Cardinals, you know, who knows, but they do have to, they host Philadelphia, they go um, to San Francisco, and then they play Buffalo. I mean, that's a tough month, but the offensive line looked good. I mean, Stafford looked good. The defenses looked good. I don't know if, if this team can make the playoffs just because they play a brutal schedule, but if they do, do not count this team out. Next up, Denver. I'm shocked I have Denver in this half, but they're 6-5 and five with Bo Nix. They just beat the shit out of Atlanta. They dominated every game. Bo Nix, 300 passing yards. Javante Williams, almost seven yards per carry. They only allowed 226 yards and two field goals. Cortland Sutton has looked good. I mean, this team, Bo Nix has been everything that they needed from him. 
307 passing yards. I mean, 73% completion percentage, 17 to 2 interception to touchdown ratio, vice versa. You know what I mean? The rookie of the year race between him and Jane Daniels is not over. The Niners, they're 5-5. Five and five. Listen, I know they lost, but they have been dealing with injuries left, right, and center. No George Kill, no Brandon Ayuk. They only had 300 yards of offense because of that. Nick Bosa was on the sideline for the second half. The Niners, they're not playing consistent football. Obviously, Kyle Shanahan has been pissed. Fred Warner was pissed off. They're only one game behind the, um, the Arizona Cardinals, and, and this is a team that if they can get healthy, they they just got Christian McCaffrey back a couple weeks ago. They're not the same team from last year. Just be, I don't know if it's because of injuries or age or what it is, but the defense is really the, the, the issue. They, they get confused a lot in motion which is weird considering the, the strength of this defense um but yeah this is an interesting team but if they can get healthy i think they can make a run and then the final team in the nfc west the arizona cardinals um they're six and four at this point they just had their bye kyler murray has looked great they do have a tough stretch coming up they have to take two game threes against seahawks and then they have to take on minnesota in minnesota so two of those three next weeks are on the road i mean listen they're the most consistent team in the nfc west and one team has to make it from the nfc west i don't necessarily know if i think they're the best but i definitely think they have a chance to make the playoffs it'll be interesting next up houston i mean here's this is a houston team that cj stroud has looked mid ever since that win against the bears but he's played well nico collins was back um joe mixon 153 yard three touchdowns he played fantastic and then Nico Collins had a 70-yard touchdown that was uh, nullified by a penalty that, that you know, he can bring a lot of verticality to the Texans offense. And then the Houston Texans, they played three straight games against teams with losing records going into Arrowhead. I mean, listen, they could be 10-4 going into that game. And if they get 10 wins in this division, they'll win it. Next up, the Chargers. They're 7-3, and three, a very quiet 7-3 and three from the Chargers. I mean, this was a great game against the Bengals. Obviously, they took it a commanding lead. Then the uh, Bengals rode all the way back, and then they were able to win and down. Um, J.K. Dobbins punched it in. Yeah, I mean, this team, it's it's very hardball, right? Lean on your defense, lean on your run game, use your quarterback to make plays timely when you need them the most. Uh, J.K. Dobbins has had a great season. Led McConkey has been in a resurgent piece for this team, but there's really no rest. Obviously, you have to go, uh, you play Baltimore on Monday, and then you take on two more division leaders, including your second time against the Chiefs. Yeah, I mean, listen, I, I, the Chargers team feels different. You've, I don't know if that's Harbaugh, if that's who, but like they feel different. Next up, the Commies. Um, they lost to Philly, obviously, this season, but they're 7-4. They started 7-2, lost their last two, but they've only averaged 253 yards in their last two games on just four yards of play while only completing 31% of their third downs. Jane Daniels, only 23 rushing yards in the last two games. He seems limited. I don't know if he's injured. Uh, only 59% of his completion, or yeah, 59% completion percentage, 393 yards, one-to-one touchdown ratio, 74% pass rating. And that one touchdown was like in the final minute when the game was over, so it was a garbage time touchdown. Commanders came back down to earth, obviously, in the last couple weeks, but nobody expected them to be this good. And they do play a really soft schedule. They don't play another team with a winning record. I'm looking at it here until they play the Eels in D.C. in Week 16. So we got four weeks until they play a good team. I mean, listen, the Commanders, they look good. I think they're probably still going to sneak into the playoffs. But listen, any they, nobody expected them to even be in the playoff hunt. So for them to make the playoffs would be a huge accomplishment. Next up, the fucking Packers. I don't want to talk about the Packers too much. They they only attempted 17 passes. They should not have won this fucking game. Christian Watson, 150 yards in a score on just four catches. He was ridiculous. Fifth win in six games for Green Bay. You're, you know, the only the only problem, the only reason for them is that they're not winning this division is you play in the fucking North, which the Vikings are good, and you have the Lions who are just beating the shit out of teams. Jordan Love is, is just like fucking Favre and just like Aaron Rodgers. He makes some ridiculously dumbass throws, but then he'll make plays when you really need it that are just incredible. And and it it sucks, but ugh, I fucking hate the Packers, bro. And what's even worse, the Vikings are just as good. And and the Lions are fucking great. We're gonna talk about the Vikings. Sam Darnold, they beat Tennessee this week. Um Throwing five interceptions in the last two games. Does not look really that good. Fumbled as well, but uh, 246, two touchdowns, eighth win in 10 tries. Kevin O'Connell has been great this season. He's called a fucking fantastic game. Um, the Vikings, again, I don't want to be a hater, but I'm going to be a little bit a hater. This Vikings team legitimately could win 13 games this season. Um, Aaron Jones, really, again, they really didn't rush the ball that well, 82 yards at two and a half yards per carry. But I, I really feel like this team is going to fall flat in the playoffs. Like, you, I could see this team winning 13 games and then running into the Rams in or the Cardinals or the Niners and then just losing in that game um but you know they're a good story and I don't want to have to play them twice in the next like eight weeks Baltimore's next they lost at Pittsburgh Pittsburgh is just this another team that's really quiet Baltimore allowed seven and four they're a great team um but the offense was a struggle Derrick Henry had 65 yards on the ground Justin Tucker I don't know what's going on with Justin Tucker he is he looks bad Missed two of his three field goal tries they turned the ball over three times um had a lot of penalties had a lot of turnovers uh Pittsburgh's a great team um, we haven't even mentioned them yet. Ravens defense looks fantastic, though. 18 points. You're going to win most games if you only allow 18 points. The problem is your offense only scores 16. They, they struggle against the Steelers. I think they're 1-7 against the Steelers in the last eight games, which is fucking crazy because the Steelers have been buns the last three years. Um, 
I think it'll be interesting to see how they played on the stretch. And speaking of the Steelers, eight and two, eight and two, a very quiet eight and two. They beat Baltimore. Um, defense is incredible. Obviously, TJ Watt has been everywhere. Chiefs and Bills are probably the two best teams in the AFC. We just saw an incredible game this past weekend. But Cameron Hayward, Minka Fitzpatrick, they're a top eight defense. They also have Patrick Queen. They brought in Joy Porter Jr. I mean, Russell Wilson is doing just enough on offense. You have George Pickens outside. Najee Harris is playing okay. Jalen Warren. I mean, this team, again, a very sneaky eight and two. Speaking of a team that's eight and two, not very sneaky, the Philadelphia Eagles beat Washington. Saquon Barkley, 26 carries, 146 yards, two touchdowns, 52 yards through the air on just two catches. I mean, this dude is a fucking flat out superstar. This offensive line looks good, even without um, Jason Kelsey. Jordan Mailata uh, Jordan has been fantastic at left tackle. Lane Johnson on the opposite side, same thing. The offensive line looks great. They, I haven't even mentioned Devonta Smith, Jalen Hurts, AJ Brown, Dallas Goddard. The defense, especially the pass defense, has looked better. This season, and the Lions are probably the best team. The Eagles are not far behind. Back to the AFC, we got the Bills. I know they just beat the fucking Chiefs. I'm not going to sit here and, and and do that damn game. And and they made a statement, right? Fourth and two with the with uh, <clears throat> inside field goal range. They have Josh Allen take off for 26 yards. They get a touchdown there. Buffalo, you needed this win. Buffalo just needs wins against this fucking Chiefs team because the Chiefs team they own Buffalo when it matters. And again, you might not see you might see them in the playoffs. That's the one that matters. But fucking hell, bro. Josh Allen, the mash all the buttons play. Josh Allen running is incredible. And they didn't have Keon Coleman or Dalton Kincaid. Yo, listen, if they play during the playoffs, it's going to be fireworks. I think Kansas City is, is better still, but listen. And you lose at Buffalo. The Chiefs have been playing with fire. They've won one score games. They've won fourth quarter comebacks. Mahomes has not been the best. Um, and they finally fall from the undefeated ranks. It is interesting to see this Chiefs team kind of sputter offensively. Josh Allen, again, he just... There's no more pressure for the Chiefs to worry about getting a perfect season. And so now you're just going to go out and play football. Um, you're not worried about perfection. And now I think you'll see guys, I don't want to say load manage, but I think you'll see, perfect example, I think you'll see more young guys on defense. I think you'll see more, some more Noah Gray and a little less Travis Kelsey just to make sure Travis Kelsey is ready to go come January. And number one, Detroit. I mean, again, they beat the shit out of Jacksonville. This team, Jared Goff had a perfect passer rating. Amonra St. Brown, 11 passes, 150, scored twice. They had almost seven, they had 650 yards of offense and allowed only 170. They had 38 first downs. Jacksonville had 10. Obviously, it sucks. You you're, you still don't have Aiden Hutchinson. Alex Anzalone broke his arm. He's going to be out six to eight weeks. So uh, essentially the rest of the season, regular season, you hope that the guys can step up. You're going to get him back for the playoffs. But listen, there really isn't much to learn. Um, Zadarius Smith looks good. I talked about him in another video. But at the end of the day, this this Detroit team looks fucking dangerous. They're still not my pick in the Super Bowl. I'm not going to bet against Kansas City until they prove to me that I shouldn't bet on them until they get eliminated. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to talk more about the NFL. If you guys enjoy stuff like this, make sure to let me know. Comment down below what you're going to see me do next. Comment down below what you thought about what I said. And YouTube thinks you're going to like this video. Find out if they're right.